Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, February 18th, 2024. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast. It's been determined length, episode number 730. And I would like to welcome back to the show, Dr. Edward Angelini Cook. Yay! Yay! Anyway, Welcome back. if anything we know, if it sounds gay, it isn't. I'm in. <laughs> in like Flynn. I wonder if I want to legally change my name. To gay? <laughs> Sidebar. Just so you know, I have many a time been writing my name, like, signature, and I, like, write it so fast I know I'm like, hmm. There's an R missing. <laughs> Hi, gay. <laughs> so you know. usually for my last name, I, I I do the like the first three letters, then just do a swoosh. Oh, okay. Yeah, I. Uh... My, my. Go ahead. Oh uh, no! I was going to say that um, my name is uh, very rapidly reducing down just to my initials um my students are now just calling me eac Aww. so it's very easy to sign my name that way that i was eek. <laughs> eek. Mm-hmm. i had to laugh because recently i was discussing with a coworker about how like when i sign official documents i include my middle initial but if it's not like an official document, then I don't include it. Like that's the distinction for me. And I decided that way back when I was a young adult, like I wanted to have something that was a legit signature and things that were just like, whatever. Um, so we were talking about like when you sign documents for work and stuff like that. So there is that. Angie. You know. Why are we really here, Gary? Uh, well, we're here today in the year of whatever you believe in. Um, <laughs> no, uh, so, yeah, so to let uh, folks know, Damon will be absent for this episode because he is at North American Bear Weekend. So he's at NAB, um, probably having a good time. At least that's what uh, Twitter and Blue Sky and other such places uh, Being are dragged maybe. around the place by Trela. Well, I was thinking more about that there's lots of fun things happening. The people are making video content that you may have to pay to watch. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I've heard stories. <laughs> Just say it, guess. So, anyways, I'm not saying David's doing that. I mean, if he is, good, good on you. Have some side hustle. So, anyways, um, but. It's that time of the month, and uh, Ed has joined us again because we're doing landscape of relationships. And this time, we have an interesting topic. I mean, I think they're all interesting, but we're going to talk about tolerance versus acceptance, which I find very intriguing because I feel like people tolerate certain things, and they accept other things, and they might not think of them as similar or the same. And perhaps they're really mm-hmm. not. Mm. I mean, sort of, um, but I think one has uh, one has better long term outcomes than the other. Okay. Mm-hmm. So let's Which get into it. What, what is what is the the dealio here? What are we learning? Um, all right. So um, I thought that we would have a conversation about what 
tolerances, obviously, what acceptances, obviously. Uh, and then like, you know, what, what are some of the, um, the outcomes of practicing these? And then also um, how we can practice more acceptance in our relationships um, and not just feel like we have to tolerate things. Mm, okay. Um, so like, so what, what do you think tolerance is? Allowing something to exist that annoys the shit out of me. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Aggressive. I, I appreciate your candor. <laughs> well, you know. Jeff, what about you? Jeff, what about you? What do you think tolerance is? It's when I tolerate something. I really don't have a good definition. Although, to be fair, fair Gary has a very a relatively accurate one, but I would say it's it's things I avoid talking about and do not like. Mm. Okay. Or or interacting would... with just you you be you, but say anyway. right, you be over there, I'm gonna be me over here, and we don't have to we don't have to bump heads. Well, I, I mean I feel like like I think about this at work, like I tolerate a lot of things at work. Um, and to tolerate means like I accept that they exist and that they're there and I deal with them, but like, I don't, I don't interact if I don't have to, um, which I guess is avoidance. Um, <laughs> like I, you know, it's, it, it's to me, it's an acceptance of a thing, but I'm not happy about it or I'm not pleased about it. I'm not, you know, I'm not a fan. <laughs> I'm not one of your fans. <laughs> yeah, so I would agree that um, tolerance kind of falls in line with that for me as well. Um, and when I look it up, when I looked it up, um, you know, tolerance is defined as the state of putting up with something without directly opposing it. Uh, and you know, some also some other things that comes up when you think of uh, tolerance is enduring or just allowing certain behaviors to be there. Like we have some kind of control over that. Um, mm. But it like doesn't mean embracing or supporting these behaviors or actions. Right. Like, you know, we're definitely not a fan. Well, I mean, I think of it this way. Like if you're in the workplace and there's someone who is uh, super talkative to the point of like either distraction or like keeping you from getting your work done or like you start assessing and realizing like I can't really engage with this person very much because they're going to keep me from doing what I need to get done um, mm -hmm. or they just annoy you or whatever. Like I feel like you tolerate them in the workplace um, because, you know, you're not trying to modify the situation per se. Yeah. So how do you think that that's different from acceptance? Um, <laughs> I think of acceptance as like acknowledgement and, uh, you're okay with it. So like the distinction for me is like, um, I've been told this in the past. People are like, oh, well that's, guess that's the, what's the way Gary is, which sounds to me like acceptance, like they they acknowledge this is a thing, this is a known thing, and they're okay with it. Like, it doesn't bother them or disgruntle them or cause them, like, negative feelings. Sure about that? <laughs> There's something you want to talk about, Ed? <laughs> <laughs> um... Well, Jeff, what about you? What do you think acceptance is? 
Uh, I, th I, I think Gary pretty much nailed it. It's taking stock in the situ situation and ex and including it in your life. Okay, so like kind of like what the, you know, like one of the differences between acceptance and tolerance is like um, not actively avoiding something. Right. Okay. So um, tolerance is like, kind of, you know, acceptance is, stay is, over there. is a hug. Oh, I love that. Oh, we love hugs. Mm -hmm. More hugs. Um, so when I think of um, acceptance, right, or how it has been explained to me, so it's a state of opening yourself up completely to a situation. Um, and that's different about uh, it's it's not how your mind sees it, right? Um, so like you know, the both of you said, right? So it's acknowledging the reality of a situation without the need to change it or resist it, right? Not, I don't have to avoid this. Um, and being open to differences and embracing them through love and compassion. So I think the other thing to remember though is when it comes to acceptance, um, we don't have to like something to accept it. Right. I but I feel like acknowledging it is accepting it, but not like, I don't know, being bothered by it. Okay. Like I think that's um, the, the fine line between tolerance and acceptance. It's like tolerance is I hate going back to it, but it's like it annoys me. It bothers me. It elicits a negative reaction out of me. Acknowledgement for me okay. is kind of status neutral like i'm not happy about it but it doesn't like anger me or agitate me i guess yeah i mean i think that um uh and you know i hope that when you know by the time this conversation is over right that like you know we can't really necessarily control when something angers us or whatever like that but we can use acceptance um, to help manage that, those anger and some of those like negative reactions, right? Um, or negative responses, right? That we don't really necessarily have control over. Um, but like that, so like the the other uh, thing, and I think Jeff kind of touched on it, like tolerance is like a head thing, it's like a thinking thing, and acceptance is a heart thing. Okay. Right. So like, um, like in order for us to accept something, it has to kind of go through our heart, right. Um, to practice love and compassion. Um, so like, what do you think the process of tolerance, like, what do you think that does? Um, like, what do you think that process is like? Do you mean like what do what do we think the tolerating is like the behavior of it or yeah what what do you think goes into tolerating something it's what kind of thoughts what kind of emotions it's it's when there is something that you just like keep it at least arm's length you're like. Uh, like tolerating annoying person at work it's like they're there but every time they open their mouth and say something which you just don't interact with it mm -hmm. stay away I know I've had some people who I tolerated at work several times oh yeah absolutely Gary, what about for you? What do you think kind of goes into your process of tolerating something? Um, I, I think, yeah, I think when it comes to tolerating, it's like there's a 
I think there's a big like emotional kind of aspect because it it draws something up in you and it's like I was saying it's like a negative feeling and then tolerating I feel like is is recognizing that and being resigned that that is the state of that what it elicits from you. Mm-hmm. It's um it's kind of like Like here's a for instance, and and, it, and this always boggles my mind. So you have a common workspace at work, like a break room, and it has like a fridge or a sink, microwave, you know, common home kind of items that you have. There are conveniences. The fridge is to put your food in. The microwave is to be able to heat things up or defrost them. The sink is to wash the dishes. And yet there is an ongoing issue in some workplaces that people can't take care of these things. So they make them messy. They don't clean up after them. They don't wash their dishes. They leave them sitting in the sink. And I feel like a lot of the workplace tolerates that behavior. While feeling like. You should you should absolutely know that you like clean up after yourself. Not take care of to correct it. Right. Until it boils mm-hmm. over and then eventually someone sends a nasty gram. <laughs> <laughs> an, email, an email that's like for the love of everything clean up after yourself well it's not quite that but yeah mm-hmm. so I feel like like everyone's tolerating what's happening while also like not being happy about it like you know being displeased by the fact that it's taking place it, yeah so um, the you know the one thing with tolerance is that um it there's like the assumption that like you're suppressing some kind of difficult emotion um and Mm. what 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 do you think happens when we suppress difficult emotions well they don't stay suppressed forever no i think you said that like sometimes they result in a nasty gram I call it a nasty gram. I'm pretty sure it's always professionally written that there is a chastising. <laughs> there is a chastising undertone. I don't write the emails, but it, it usually comes from management that says, <laughs> as a reminder, always make sure that the freezer door is fully closed. And if you spill something, you clean it up. And if you make a mess in the microwave, that you wipe out the microwave and that you wash your dishes when you put them in the sink. Like it's usually like this kind of like reminder with air quotes about like be a decent fucking human being and clean up after yourself you <laughs> pigs <laughs> pigs um, yeah so like you know tolerating something can lead to feelings of um, like resentment and anger um, because there's this like general lack of acceptance and understanding um, regarding that so the the difference with acceptance is that uh, the acceptance process, uh, that leads us, right? Like if we think about like um, like a fork in the road, right? One of the forks goes towards tolerance and the other one goes towards acceptance, right? The, the acceptance pathway um, can lead us to feelings of love, compassion, and empathy. Um, and it can also lead us towards connection. So the more that we feel connected to somebody, the deeper our understanding of their actions will go. Interesting. So it kind of sounds like, because you use the fork on the road metaphor, uh, acceptance is the dish you want to eat. Tolerance is the dish that you'll eat, but you don't like. Yeah. Mm hmm. But, and like, you know, acceptance is, hey, this is what I have in front of me, right? I can either um, eat it in spite or I can appreciate it. Okay. I don't know if I would, I guess I never thought of acceptance as, as, as in spite, but I guess so. Or tolerance is eating something in in spite. That's fair. Yeah, not ex- no acceptance is, um, or or I appreciate what's right in front. I appreciate what's right in front of me. In 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 this metaphor, it could even be if 
it's food you do not like. You accept that you do not like it and you say thank you, but no. It's not a negative thing. I appreciate mm -hmm. that you are offering me this dish of shrimp. I am just not a fan of shrimp. I do not right. like the taste I mean, of shrimp. I mean, that's a personal I'm, thing. I'm, that's I'm a me you. thing. I accept that you gave, you were attempting to give me a nice dish and I appreciate it. But sadly, I do not like it. Right. <laughs> I do not like grid eggs and ham. Um, yeah, I no, mean, that, it, that it, makes it, sense it would be, me. what is the reason why they're green? If it's just food dye, I'd totally accept it. But if it's, and who knows if it's from some alien creature that, that lays the uh, uh, green eggs or the meat of a pig that's a, uh, that just happens to be green, green, but it's not moldy. I would eat right. green eggs in here. So I'm curious, Ed, like, how would this work in a relationship? Like, what, what, how would you look at things within a relationship that are tolerated versus accepted? Um, well, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, if we're looking at, say, romantic relationships, right, um, we're going to be annoyed <laughs> by something that our partner does. Like, that is, like, I can't take that away, right? Um we are not perfect people. Um, there's definitely going to be something that it annoys you about the other person. So you have, you know, like I said, you have two choices. You can either tolerate it or you can accept it. Tolerating it would be like, um, I don't know, like, so a good example would be um, I tolerate the fact that um you know, we, um, I don't know, my partner clicking his tongue or something, or uh, the way they drive, or uh, the music that they listen to, or um, the interests that they have, right? Um, uh like i tolerate that you know i can tolerate that right but like that will like we said right that will uh, burden us with all of this anger and resentment um super not helpful um and the way that we can practice you know acceptance right is to you know kind of rec recognize that we're not the same person um and that there are probably things that like I do that annoy them um, and that they still love me. Um, so, you know, and that's, that's a process, right. That allows me to feel like, or that can allow me to feel closer to them. Um, but there is a, um, a way that tolerance can, you know, like to use that pork in the road metaphor, uh, there are things that can happen with with tolerance where um, I'm kind of moving further away from somebody rather than closer to them. And the, the, there's an acronym uh, that uh, one of my favorite authors, uh, Russ Harris, uses called DRAIN. Um, so what DRAIN stands for is disconnection, reactivity, avoidance, right? We, um, we used that word before. Um, inside your mind and neglecting values. Um, so these are all things that like when we are kind of uh, fused with the tolerance um, mind frame, these are things that can kind of, uh, you know, be not helpful, right? So like I said before, when it comes to acceptance, the kind of the goal for acceptance is connection. Um, I want to mm. feel more connected with you. So if I'm just kind of tolerating something, um, and even like Jeff said it before, right? It's like, you stay over there, right? Um, 
I don't want, I don't want anything to do with what you're doing. So like that does not really help me feel connected to, to my partner, uh, to my coworker, to, um, you know, uh, my friend, whatever that relation, my family member, um, that doesn't happen. And then um, reactivity, right? So like sometimes the stories that I tell myself, right, about um, uh, my partner's actions or something um, can cause me, right? That like kind of build up of anger and frustration can, can you know, I may not act, <laughs> like the perfect partner in that moment, right? I may make snide comments under my breath. I may, um, I may roll my eyes, right? Um, I may send a nasty gram, <laughs> right? Um, there are a bunch of things that I can do um, that are going to be reactive um, to this, you know, to these behaviors that I'm, I'm, I'm not doing a great job of, of accepting. Um, that makes sense. It does. Like I was thinking of this, like if you're in, and I think a lot of new developing relationships will, will handle this topic, like tolerance versus acceptance, because if you're new to the relationship and let's say that you just moved in together and you've discovered that your partner, um, here's a couple different examples. Um, does not feel it necessary to do laundry until it is absolutely necessary. Where mm -hmm. you might be like, no, I do laundry every single week. That way it doesn't like mount up. Um, so you may have, you may find yourself at this crossroads, so to speak, because, you know, in the beginning you're realizing that they have very different, like a perspective about this household chore, this task. And, mm -hmm. It's like, do you tolerate this like situation? Do you accept it? Do you move from tolerating it into accepting it? Um, I mean, I think it's obviously a good opportunity to communicate and to have that discussion with your partner about how it makes you feel and what your perspective is and to see, you know, what they want to do. And, it, and the resolution may be that that you keep your laundry separate from each other and you like they do their thing when they need to do it and you do your thing when you need to do it as opposed to together. Exactly. I don't know. Um, but, but, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say uh, like, or a second example I was thinking of was, um, and this seems to be a very popular thing in relationships is what to do when the laundry's done. Like, do Ooh. you let it sit in the dryer and then you just pull it out of the dryer and grab it eventually? Or do you take it promptly out of the dryer? Do you let it sit in, in the basket in a stack? Or do you like fold it? Do you hang it? Do you iron it? Like there's a lot of options there, but I've heard several times in relationships about how like people have very specific opinions about what handle, what, how the things get handled and how they get addressed in that manner. And so I feel like that's a dynamic that develops in a relationship. It's like, do you or do you not like do you tolerate it? Do you accept it? Do you have, you know, try to have a conversation about it? That's a, that's a really good example. Um, right. And I also, I also think like just cleaning in general, right. Um, you know, I think everybody has their own, uh, approach when it comes to cleaning, right. Um, or cooking or something. And, we can get so like frustrated because they're not cleaning or they're not cooking the way that we would do it. Mm -hmm. um, and that can, that can really like, think about all the things that even with the laundry example, right? Like, you know, when, when somebody doesn't do their laundry the same way that, that we do, right? Like what would be some of the, the things that we, would think about our partner during those moments? What would be some like automatic thoughts that we have? <laughs> well, one that comes to mind right away, hence I'm signal, is separate your fucking like colors. Like separate the whites from the darks or from the stuff that's gonna bleed because I didn't pay for this shit to like to have it ruined anyways. Yep, take care of your shit. 
right? Um, like I'm, I think that like somebody would be like, "God, you're lazy." Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Because that is not what entered my mind at all. I was like, either. But just as I have to explain this, I guess, because what I was about to say is like, you're very selfish. And by that, I meant like, you're not thinking of others or the impact of your action or inaction on others. But then another part of me is thinking like, but this is, but this also may be just an opportunity to realize that they don't know something. See, this is the educator in me. Like I always, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at it from a perspective of like, do they not know that they can do that? Like, are they not aware that you can separate your clothes and therefore by doing so like you reduce the risk of cross like bleed of of a color or having issues you know that your whites look dingy or dull or whatever um and maybe they don't care yeah um you know and i think that uh that that can be where somebody like where that like uh the tolerance can come in because then we're like we're kind of judging them um uh, for what they're doing um and do you think that judging people brings us closer together <laughs> or like further apart I don't know, Ed, why don't you sit next to me while we have mimosas during gay brunch and we watch a drag show and see how much judging we have. <laughs> okay, plain. <laughs> no, I'm in seriousness. No, I, I hear what you're saying. I think what you're trying to say is like that judging creates the chasm. You know, it it separates. Yeah, um, it, it it's like the form of the disconnection, right? And... Um, uh but again like you know not something that we can like it's going to happen right um this is something that happens in every single relationship so you know i think that you know the the point of it is to acknowledge that it's happening um and we'll we'll get into that but you know not super helpful um so then like the other thing, um, so we talked about the disconnection, the, the reactivity, right? That's that like automatic thing. Gosh, you're, you're so selfish. Gosh, you're so lazy. Um, uh, that's, you know, kind of what our, what our mind wants to do. And the, the next one is avoidance, right? Um, we avoid interacting with them while they're doing these things, right? We, we imagine that they're not happening. Um, and we're really good at avoiding things. Um, but avoiding things, right, does not um, give us the opportunity to, like, um, like, get through that, right? Um, and, like, why do you think that we avoid it? Well, I think I think we avoid things that we find difficult or painful or challenging. Mm -hmm. Right. Like last time we talked about the experiential avoidance. Right. Um, the, the, the idea that like we don't want to feel bad. Um, feeling bad doesn't feel good. We want to feel good. So like avoiding uncomfortable feelings. Um, is helpful for us, right? But in the but in the long term, it's not right because we're just kind of kicking the can down the road and bringing up more uh, frustration and more anger, right? So it doesn't really. It's not it, the long term. In the long term, it doesn't really help. Um, and like, and we do this um, by. Uh, you know, uh, through a myriad of ways, right? We distract ourselves through TV, through drugs, through alcohol, um, uh, through, you know, sometimes even I, I get the, I, the impression of like a, the angry teenager stomping themselves into their room 
mm-hmm. right? Um, uh, or, you know, refusing to have a conversation with your partner about a topic or, um, you know, shutting down and refusing to listening, listen to them. Um, we don't want to, like when people say, I don't deal well with conflict or, um, you know, we're really bad at that. Well, you're not going to get good at it unless you talk about it. It's not, you know, like the purpose of conflict um, is to find a middle ground, um, is to compromise. Um, and, you know, on the other side of conflict is some form of resolution. Um, but we're not going to get to that resolution unless we go through that yuck. Mm-hmm. Right. It doesn't, if the goal is connection, it just moves us further away. Right. Um, So like the other thing um, that happens um, when we, when we talk about tolerance, right? Like we talked about how tolerance is like in our head. Right. Um, So this is a good um, example of like that. um, Another way that we are, we can like, not feel connected to another person is um, we are more in line with the thoughts that are going through our head with than the other person who's right in front of us, right? Like um, there's something that I like to tell my clients all the time. What is the story that your mind is telling you right now? So to use the, uh, the uh, laundry example, right? Uh, the story that the, that my mind is telling me right now is that they're selfish and they, they don't care about me and my things. Mm-hmm. Or, um, you know, or that they're lazy and this, um, you know, do I really want to be in a relationship with somebody who's lazy? So again, like listen, recognizing that we're inside our mind um, and that we have a closer relationship with our mind than we do with the other person who's right in front of us um, is that's not going to be helpful. Um, Fair. And I mean, I think that's where the communicating is key because the other person isn't a mind reader, so they don't know what you're thinking and how you're feeling. Right. And if to go, kind of bounce back to the avoidance, if we're avoiding having those conversations with them, um, then we're never going to be able to ask those questions to, um, I don't want to say disprove, but like disprove some of the stuff that's going in our head. Right. Um, and then the other one is neglecting our values, right? So like um, when we are practicing tolerance with somebody, right? Um, we are so connected with our thoughts that we're not really thinking about, well, what's really important in this moment, um, right? Like uh, what kind of partner do I wanna be? Do I wanna be a partner who's resentful and unkind and an asshole? Um, or do I really want to, or do I want to be compassionate? Do I want to be understanding? Do I want to be loving? Do I want to be caring? Right? Um, somebody who is understanding, somebody who's kind of compassionate, somebody who's um, empathetic, right, is more willing to have difficult conversations. Mm-hmm. So how does a individual, what is, is there steps to follow or a way to process to move from tolerance into acceptance? Oh my goodness. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So the, um, uh, so that's, that's one acronym, right? The second acronym um, that I want to kind of go over is the idea of love, right? L-O-V-E. Um, And love can stand for uh, letting go, opening up, 
values and engage. Um, so when it comes to letting go, um, part of this is the acceptance the acceptance of like, these things are going to happen, right? Um, we're going to be frustrated. We're going to be angry. Um, there are going to be things that annoy us about our other partner. So like, let's just accept that that's a reality and um, notice it when it's happening. So um, there is uh, another process that I go for, through called notice, name, and let go. So um, to notice something is to say, oh, um, I notice that I'm feeling frustrated right now, or I notice that I'm feeling angry right now. Um, uh, I notice that I am um, telling myself that you are lazy, <laughs> right? Um, you know, the story in my mind is that you don't care about me. Um, let's just kind of name these things um, as they are perfectly acceptable things that can happen within a relationship. They're going to happen. Um, and that we can um, kind of think about it like, I think the analogy that, that I like to use is um, leaves on a stream, right? Um, oh, there goes, there goes the leaf, the leaf of of boredom, right? There goes the leaf of, um, you don't care about me. There goes the leaf of anger, right? Um, and just let them pass. Um, and that can be really helpful. Um, oh, the other thing um, to do is to kind of go back to the drain example. Um, sometimes it's really helpful to um, have a conversation with your partner to say, hey, what really bother? Is there anything that you, um, that I do that bothers you? Mm -hmm. um, and you both can have a conversation about, hey, these are the things that annoy me, right? Um, and that, that way they're out in the open, right? And we, we are not going through our life telling ourselves a story. They're doing this because they hate me. Right. Mm. They're doing this to like really bother me. And it can also help us get an understanding as to why they do that. Right. Hey, tell me, can you tell me why you mix your whites and your, um, uh, and your, 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 uh, your darks and your lights? Um, I'm really curious about that. Right. I notice that I get annoyed when I see you do that. Um, then that way that can really stir a conversation. Um, uh, where the, the resolution can be, okay, well, I'm going to start doing my laundry um, separate, <laughs> right? Uh, because it is really important to me that I separate, right? And if mm -hmm. that isn't something that's important to you, um, then maybe we need to do our laundry separate. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? It does. I mean, I, I yeah. think it's interesting um, that you brought up the idea of like ha having these check-ins mm -hmm. within the conversation you know um the uh the other thing with opening up right uh, kind of like what i said before is that um we're going to experience painful relationship we're going to experience painful feelings and relationship i can't i can't like the, the thing that I tell my clients is they're like, I just don't want to hurt anymore. And I'm like, I can't do that. Like if, if I were to um, say I had a magic button and if you press the magic button, it took away all the hurt, all the painful feelings that you had about the, per the person that you're in a relationship with. The only caveat to that is it takes away all the love that you have for that person too. And all the things that you really care about for that other person too. Like how willing are you to press that button now? And usually they say, I'm not. Um, and I'm like, yeah, like the hurt that you feel is in direct relation to how much you love somebody. Um, so like, it's about um, recognizing um, 
that like the 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 pain that I'm feeling right now is because I love them, right? Um, and I care about them, and I can either not tell them or I can tell them. Um, so the idea of opening up is I have to make room for all of these negative or all of these. I don't like to use the word negative, but all of these um, unhelpful feelings that I'm having in this moment, right? So the the way that I tell my clients to do this is um, like, have we ever talked about the concept of the um, annoying Aunt Ida? I don't recall. Okay. So think about all of these like unhelpful thoughts, these stories, these, um, you know, these painful things that show up while, when you're in a relationship, like this annoying family member who's like knocking on your door um, at usually the most inopportune time. And um, they have that like roast tuna casserole that you just think is like the worst thing ever. Um, but you also know that like, if you don't let them in, they're not going to go away. So like you have two choices, you can either let them um, keep, um, keep knocking. Um, or you can let them in. And uh, that's where we have the two choices, right? We can either tolerate them or we can accept them. So we know that like the tolerating thing, I'm only going to get more frustrated. So the acceptance process is that I acknowledge that they're there, right? The whole notice name and, um, and let them be there, right? Hi, Aunt Ida. Um, I allow them in. Hey, why don't you come in? I accommodate them. Can I get you a, can I take that? <laughs> you know, in the back of my mind, can I take that gross um, tuna casserole <laughs> um, out of your hands? Um, I'll put it in the kitchen. Um, can I get you a, a, a nice tea, right? Um, you know, make room for them, make them feel at home. Um, and then I can appreciate them. So like, how that can work with, um, you know, in a relationship is like, I acknowledge the fact that I feel really frustrated right now because you're not separating your whites from your, from your darks. Right. Um, I can allow, um, I can, you know, uh, that feeling to be there. Right. Um, you know, of course I'm frustrated. Right. Um, this is really important to me. Um, I can accommodate it. And um, usually then I will say to myself, what is this feeling trying to tell me? What is the story that this feeling is trying to tell me? Well, this feeling, like, I don't know, Gary, what do you, when, when you could recognize that somebody isn't separating their, um, their darks from the lights, like, what is the story that your mind is telling you in that moment? That they have different priorities than me. Um, I mean, I was going to say they don't care. <laughs> well, but I didn't want to say that lazy. because those could be true. But I feel like what I've recognized is that for me, it's a priority. For them, it's not. Mm -hmm. And therefore, like, I don't, I don't know with certainty in that moment yet, if I haven't discussed it with them, if they are being lazy or... Um, you know, that they, that they don't care. The reality is it may not have occurred to them that that's a thing. And that by washing the two together, their whites end up turning more gray over time. Like I, mm -hmm. through my life experience, there have been a fair amount of times that I've presumed the knowledge of another person and then learned, Oh no, that's not the case. So I try right. more than ever to like default and back it up and be like, to give them space and be like, maybe they just don't know. Well, so um, I can appreciate that. I think, um, you know, the, another way that like that can go is that um, like my mind will do that, right? Um, but then also like it'll, you know, it'll try to tell me that like, um, they're lazy. They, um, they don't care. Um, and then it'll start saying, well, they don't care about me. Um, uh, they're doing this on purpose, right? It'll kind of go down like, um, you know, really unhelpful pathways. Um, and so what I will do is I'll make room for that, right? Hey, um, you know, 
uh, thank you so much for telling me that, right? Thank you so much for reminding me that um, that the way that I do laundry is important to me, right? Um, that that this is a uh, that I really care about my clothes and I really care about um, this process, and um, I can appreciate that frustration, um, that anger that's showing up, that is letting me know that something is important to me. I accept your OCD. Right? And, How about if we make get two baskets we put the whites in one we put the darks in another so they're pretty separated <laughs> and you can do the laundry because i know you know how to do laundry better than i do i accept that you're there more you knowledgeable you're more capable and in exchange i will do the dishes <laughs> there you go I think that's a really good example Jeff I was the reason why I'm amused is I wasn't expecting you to say dishes but anyways <laughs> well I, I, I it was the first thing that popped into my mind as as a you do the laundry I'll do the dishes right, right, right. And, and maybe I'll take out the trash <laughs> trying to equal out exactly the right I'm accommodating right, right. you by by a lot by taking away a thing that would take up more time and take up the time um, the same um, or roughly the same amount of time that you would do with it. and also we're both cleaning i do the dishes you do the laundry we're both cleaning right. something um Exactly. Right. So, um, you know, after that process, right, of uh, appreciating it, that can lead me into having a conversation with the other person. Right. Um, which can move me closer to being connected. Right. So the next value is or the next uh, concept of this is values. Right. So like in those moments, right, we can ask ourselves, what kind of what kind of partner do I want to be? Do I want to be an asshole right now or do I want to be caring, compassionate and um you know, how can I further contribute to this relationship, right? How can I move this relationship forward, not backwards or not stagnant? Because um, not talking about something doesn't really help it move forward. So practicing those values um, can help move us closer to connection rather than away from connection, um, which then leads into engage, right? So like, um, what are some things that, while, you know, may frustrate you, frustrate you about your partner that you do feel like, you know, um, are difficult areas for you? What aren't difficult areas for you? So like, what is something that the both of you can do together so that you can be psychologically present? Um, and, uh, and that can help foster that connection. So is that, um watching a tv show together is that playing a card game is that going shopping is that you know having sex um what can be the thing that is um that will bring you closer together yes Cheers to that. <laughs> I mean, when you may, when you give good examples, what else can we say? Yeah, really. But that's why you're the expert. Well, you know. You do have a degree after all. Like a few. I was saying to somebody the other day that um, uh, you know where, like, where I was to where I am now. Um, uh, that you know, it started from this idea of like, hey, I just want, um, I just want to, I just want to pass one class, um, and that kind of led me to where I am now, and. <laughs> it's kind of funny because like at some point 
I was like, okay, this has to stop. Like, when, when is this going to end? Um, like, at some point, you have to, you know, it's okay to, like, breathe. Um, and, uh, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I think that's, it's good to have that reflection and look back on that and to realize how one led to the other. Mm-hmm. I agree. So, um, go ahead. Oh, um, the other thing I was going to say is that, um, you know, since we're talking about the landscape of relationships, um, this we can also do this with ourselves. Um, that a lot of times um, our connection with ourselves gets off skew because of the ways that we talk to ourselves, the way that we treat ourselves, um, the way we, um, you know, behave toward the way that we think about ourselves um, and that we can use that same model to us, right? Um, that we can be self-compassionate, we can be caring to ourselves um, uh, and that uh, that can also help us um, in our relationships with other people because sometimes we have to work on ourselves before we um, work on our relationships with other people. Yeah, it reminds me of I was having this conversation at work this past week about how the the familiar adage about like when you're on a plane and they are trying to explain to you, like in the event that the oxygen mask drop from the ceiling, you need to put your mask on first before you start assisting others. And it was this conversation in the workplace about how we need to take care of ourselves before we can take care of others. Um, and that we need to apply that like we were talking about our clinical setting and taking care of patients. And that, you know, that's why we have universal precautions that were developed and you wear gloves, you would wear a mask if necessary, PPE, like those things. Um, and that we sometimes, I don't want to say forget about it, but like it becomes less of a priority because we're so focused on the thing that needs to be done. Um, and we kind of disengage from the importance of taking care of ourselves which gives us the ability to take care of others. Yep. So I hear you on, on the, like, we need to do things, like we should be practicing this with ourselves, you know, as well as trying to do that with other people. And if, we, if we're able to do that with ourselves, then the process is, in my estimation, going to be um, similar, perhaps easier, or less involved with another person. Yep. Um, and like, so, you know, with acceptance, if we can't accept ourselves, um, how can we accept other people to accept us? Right. I like how you, how you respond the RuPaul aphorism. Which, you know, some people it. like, I know. Um, but, you know, I think that some people are not a big fan of that um, because they will say that, um, you know, well, sometimes love is, you know, self-love is hard and, you know, that, um, uh, that we can't, you know, that, I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but, um, you know, sometimes it does require us to like do some work. Um, Right. For us to love ourselves um, and accept ourselves so that, you know, um, it's and, th and then that way it's easier for us to recognize when other people are accepting us and when they're not. <coughs> right. When we and can there, see it in ourselves. There's also things like, like, like I accept who I am right now and I love myself for where I am right now. I would like to change a few things, but it doesn't mean that. I don't accept who I am at the moment. So like somebody who wants to lose weight or uh, uh, bulk up or something like that. The way you are now, it's perfectly okay. But I want to make an effort to change that. Making that change doesn't mean you shouldn't 
be able to love yourself as you are now. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Uh, no, it does. And I, I think there's a lot of, um, part of me, a lot of that in that I notice right when somebody says that they want to lose weight um, and somebody goes, but you're perfect the way that you are now. Um, that always kind of frustrates me because, uh, you know, I'm like, well, you know, um, that may be true. Or when I hear when, you know, I hear somebody in the, uh, uh, and I say, oh, I need to lose weight or I'm, I'm, I want to lose weight. And they're like, uh, don't lose too much. Don't listen to them. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's really quite the mixed messaging. Because mm -hmm. because now that we've been talking about this, I'm like, oh, so what you're telling me is that you accept me as I am now, but you might not accept me as I will be in the future. Mm. And that becomes a problem. Yeah, I think I, there's a, a research project I want to develop on that. I mean, to your earlier point, I don't think self-love is all that um, difficult. I mean, it can be hard. You'd like it to be hard. I mean, it's kind of the point, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, it was a bad mm -hmm. joke, and it did not go over. Anyways, we'll edit no. that out later. <laughs> but you know what? I accept that you made the attempt. Yeah, and <laughs> erections are not required for sexual pleasure. No, but they help. Uh, they, sure. <laughs> they do. Um, no, yeah, self-love is definitely a, I don't know, like sometimes when, when I talk about these things, people are like, oh, but it's easier said than done. I'm like, of course it is. Right, absolutely. I was going to say, of course it's easier yep. said than done. Saying things takes nothing. It just, That takes minimal effort. You're just like flapping your gums. Like you're just like talking shit. Like that's not work. Right. If it was easier, then I wouldn't have a job. <laughs> You'd have a different job. I'm going to win the lottery. See, that was really easy. You could... Yeah. <laughs> you could... I mean, who knows? You could you could have turned into an, an adult film star, Ed, you know? Oh, there's still time. <laughs> it's always time. <laughs> exactly. Now with uh, more will uh, be revealed. Only fans and, and just for fans. Anybody can mm -hmm. become a film star and make money. Yeah, I didn't realize that. I guess OnlyFans, um, if you want to collaborate with somebody, um, they also have to be a content creator. Yes, I believe so. Like, and, and part of this, we're sidebarring, folks. Um, I think that part of this is that what people don't realize is that the the platform needs to be certain that there is consent and acknowledgement of all the parties. And so one way to address that is to make sure that all the parties are legitimately have gone through the same process. Correct. Which I can't fault. That's that. Right. Um, that makes sense. Right. Safe. And, and so that's, I don't, I don't find fault with it. I get the frustration that people have. Um, but I think a lot of platforms are kind of moving in that direction. Like I'm pretty sure Chatterbait has a rule that like, if you're going to broadcast with someone else, the other person also has to be a broadcaster on the platform. Mm. So or at least it's registered, right? And so the well, actually, no, yeah. I not like, only do they do need they, a certain they, amount of of broadcasting time before they can be part of it. No, but I think you have to be a broadcaster, which is different than a user. So to be a user is to just like create a username. Um, but to be a broadcaster, you actually have to, I believe, turn in ID, prove like your identity as to who you are as an individual. Um, and that you're just not, you know, um, so that if something were to happen to them for some reason, legally or like li liability wise, that they, they're like, oh, no, this is a legitimate person, so on and so forth. So but I think that can be challenging, especially for people who like want to do more anonymous type activities like or like have that fantasy representation where it's a where it's an unknown. Um, 
type factor and that can be challenging mm. because then it's like well if you want the audience to feel that this is a complete stranger how do you make that happen and that's where I think the challenge lies and it also but it starts to get really fuzzy and gray right because then we're talking about like consensual non-consent sort of ish anyways yeah that's a whole sidebar conversation for another story show <laughs> yeah well, anything um, else as we're wrapping up no i think that uh you know when we're talking about the you know i think a question to ask yourself is what kind of partner do you want to be do you want to be somebody who tolerates your partner or do you want to be somebody who accepts your partner and that like knowing that when we when we think about it like a um uh like a cross on the roads right um that on one hand um tolerating your partner will you know likely lead to resentment anger disconnection the other way if we want to practice acceptance can lead to love compassion and empathy and ask which sounds better to you i'm hoping that you think that that acceptance sounds better and that it's on us to do the work to practice that acceptance um and that um we can't uh, like we can do this ourselves and that can help us in our relationship. And if we want to include our partner in on this journey as well, we can as well. Um, but the, the work starts with us. Right. Agreed. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I highly recommend this book. Um, you can't really see it, but Act with Love by Russ Harris. is a good one. Excellent. I'll add that. Check it out. And with that, I think that's the end. Oh. Yay. But that's the end of our session this today. I appreciate your attendance. We will schedule well, thank in you. the future. We'll Please uh, speak to my secretary, Gary. <laughs> In the meantime, exactly. if you want to contact us, you can uh, check out our website. It comes out loud .com. Shoot us an email. It comes out loud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361 talk. That's 361-265-8255. Prompt. What things do you tolerate with your partner or boyfriend or friend or family members? Mm. And what do you accept about them? What did you tolerate but now accept? Mm -hmm. so. uh, you can also follow us on various social media outlets such as Facebook, Twitter, slash X, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud, appropriate place of the URL. You can join our entourage Telegram chat at bit.ly slash telegram dash col. You can find out when we're planning and recording these shows by checking out our Google Calendar at bit.ly slash calendar dash col. We have various accoutrements, such as the flexibility for accessibility shirt. And actually, we have a flexibility for accessibility yoga mat mm. oh hat mug etc you can find that on a zazzle store zazzle.com slash comes out loud some of those designs were designed by smashy such as the flexibility for accessibility you can find more of his work at tpublic at tpublic.com slash user slash smashy the bear you can become a patron at patreon.com slash comes out loud or you can send us a donation at paypal.me slash comes out loud. You can um, join us on any podcasting platforms, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Audible. Uh, I recently heard that Google Play is shutting down. Ooh. Interesting. You can find me anywhere on the internet, maybe. It was box set box, puppy box, cub box, 
something or other, sometimes Elgo, sometimes Windjam, it depends on what platform it is. Gary? If you want to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. Ed, if folks want to get in touch with you, how would they do so? Uh, well, you can find me on Facebook as Edward AC. Um, I'm on Instagram as Unicub underscore Sex Brain Wizard. Um, I'm on TikTok as uh, Dr. So Dr. Unicub 79. Um, and uh, and then if you want to uh, look at my website, it's eactherapy.com. And with that, say good morning, everybody. Have a good one, y'all. Escalator.